it's a pleasure to introduce a, a colleague and a very dear friend. He was my former student many years ago, of course. Uh, I'm supposed to, many of you also have been my students. Um, Dr. Gilberto A. Brisco is Program Specialist for Conservation Policy and Research uh, at the Program Development and Implementation Unit of the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity. In concurrent capacity, he is also Program Coordinator of the ACB German Cooperation Project on Institutional Strengthening of Biodiversity in ASEAN, Program Coordinator of ASEAN Japan Partnership and program coordinator of ASEAN Korea. Dr. Noi, as is finally called in ASEAN, he obtained uh, his PhD in forestry specializing in biodiversity conservation and ecotourism in UPLB in 2000. Uh, he's uh, MSc in forestry specializing in forest pathology and ecology in 1986 and a forestry degree in 1981, all from UPLB. Uh, Dr. Rai is a very dear uh, friend and colleague, as I said. We just came from Kuala Lumpur, we'll talk more about on pushing for a global uh, ASEAN Regional Action Plan for the Global Taxonomy Initiative. Uh, as you know, the DTI is an effort by the Convention on Malum University to remove the global taxonomy impediment. Without taxonomic knowledge and without taxonomies, we won't be able to push our efforts to conserve biodiversity in this country, in ASEAN, and throughout the world. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Noi Polisko. Okay, uh, good morning, and uh, thank you, Dr. Fernando, for that. Uh, Introduction. In fact, he took away my introduction also for the paper about GTI. So, okay. As I have course in building uh, biodiversity information collections. Yeah, okay, now I got it. Okay, now, um, very few of us had the, had the privilege of attending the United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. And uh, I assure you, such negotiations in the UNCBD is quite boring. But for negotiators, it's uh, almost life and death for each party or for the country that, uh, that crafts the policy and the directions of the information or of the thematic area that is being discussed in the CBD. Now, with respect to the Global Taxonomy Initiative, it was way back in 1996 when it was recognized that there is a taxonomy in Medinet. Now, actually, it's very funny that I, I'm presenting to you all taxonomists here about taxonomic impediment, where in fact we all know that there is one, especially here in the Philippines. But by 1996, they had already crafted the program of work for the Global Taxonomy Initiative. And by 2006, this was reviewed and made some amendments and additions. And by 2008, uh, there was some outcome-oriented deliverables of the GTI program of work. Now, this uh, decision 922, it, uh, it urges the parties to promote and carry out the program of work through coordination, designation national GTI focal point, and incidentally we have uh, Dr. Fernando as the Philippines uh, GTI national focal point, and uh, we have to update information about legal requirements for the exchange of genetic and biological specimens and the setting up of national and regional networks. Now, when, uh, when there were, in 2008, uh, our, our former executive director, Rodrigo Fuentes, uh, attended the UNCBD, he recognized this uh, global taxonomy impediment. And he pushed for ASEAN Center for Biodiversity to have a program on global taxonomy initiative. And by 2010, we have the Southeast Asia Regional Action Plan. 
which addresses three groups, the policy makers, the decision makers, the users of taxonomic information, and the academia, the researchers. Uh, during that workshop, it was held here in uh, Circa, there was the identification of needs and capacity gaps and recommended actions at the time frame and who. Now, there was a series of uh, capacity building initiatives and we also developed the ACD uh, regional clearinghouse mechanism. And uh, as Dr. Fernando mentioned, uh, last week we just uh, held the regional action planning for the Global Taxonomy Initiative in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. And uh, we based this regional action plan on these seven policy frameworks we have the, uh, for the global level with the CBD, the GTI, the strategic plan and AG targets, the site CMS, etc. Now for the regional level uh, policy framework, we based this regional action plan on ASEAN Agenda 2025 and the ASEAN uh, social cultural community blueprint and for the national level there's 10 of them the NBSAPs and also the protected uh, uh, program of work for protected area and including invasive species now the ASEAN Japan cooperation that we have uh, is the, the funds come from the Japan ASEAN Integration Fund. Uh, we're promoting and enhancing the implementation of the GTI. So apparently with so many dollars going around with this Japan who is quite interested in uh, the taxonomic uh, initiative. Uh, and uh, this addresses the, the initiative through uh, Generation of Information and Biodiversity Conservation in ASEAN. Okay, now, training courses conducted 2010 and 2017. Uh, this is in support of the Global Taxonomy Initiative. In May 2009, we have the ASEAN Regional Workshop on GTI, which the product was the Regional Action Plan for 2010-2015. And as of last week, we were updating that regional action plan, the taxonomy initiative. By 2010, we had the first project with Japan. It's the taxonomy capacity building and governance for the conservation of and use of biodiversity, which is uh, we focused on dicots and corals. So. As in the ASEAN Center for Biodiversity, we do not focus not only on terrestrial, but we also do marine biology, marine uh, taxonomy also. And uh, our coral taxonomy training was held in USM uh, University of Science Malaysia in Penang. And our resource persons, we were Japanese experts on coral uh, identification, coral taxonomy. And also, by January 2011, we have a training trainers on CITES policies and species identification of threatened species, focusing specifically on reptiles. And we had a partnership with uh, Japan Traffic and also the Regional Office of Traffic in Southeast Asia as our resource persons. And uh, of course, they taught us how it was being smuggled. You know, Sometimes it's being placed in books, sometimes in the tubes. So it's sometimes very difficult to, to detect. Uh, we were taught how to detect also the smuggling of uh, reptiles. And then by February 2011, we had the taxonomy of terrestrial plants, uh, dicots, which we held in Libby. This is the uh, Research Center of Biology in uh, Bogor. And uh, we had our fieldwork also in the Chibodas Botanic Garden. Uh, that's about two hours away from Bogor. And that, that Botanic Garden is worth seeing also. It's 1,400 meters above sea level. By May 
in June 2011, we have the internship program for the taxonomy of hard corals and terrestrial plants, specifically in Tycots, in the Phuket Marine Biology Laboratory in Thailand, and also the Forest and Marine Map of Thailand. Now, a lesson learned here is that uh, we tried to come up with an output for uh, technical papers, scientific technical papers for uh, taxonomy training. We can say that the ASEAN member state participants are quite intelligent. Unfortunately, it is the language barrier that, uh, that becomes the impediment of coming up with scientific articles. So we had to abandon that uh, approach in training them to come up with uh, articles because we were training them on how to do scientific uh, writings for the identification of uh, uh, plants, specifically for plants. So we had to rethink our approach because we just could not come up with very good scientific papers or scientific articles for publication because of the English language. We came up instead with uh, field guide books and I will show you uh, what they look like. And so by June 2011, we have a GTI National Focal Points Capacity Building and Orientation Workshop and a meeting on species and protected areas, database interfaces here in Manila, Philippines. Now, what has databases to do with uh, taxonomy? So we have to store those information somewhere. Okay. So we are trying to fill in or uh, make a continuum from species uh, identification or information generation to uh, information storage, which are held in databases and such. By 2012, we have another project in Japan, and this is what we call expanded. So we went into monocots and data organizing and mapping. And uh, our training workshop was held in uh, again, Libby, Bogor, Botanic Garden. Now since uh, it was Japan funded, uh, Japan already funded a very good facility for Urbarium Laboratory in Libby. So that's why we had to, uh, we had to, what you call this, uh, conduct that uh, training program in Libby because we have to use the Japanese facilities since they were our sponsor. Okay. So by July 2012, we have biodiversity data organizing and mapping. In, uh, this was held in Kota Kinabalu, and uh, our field work was in Kinabalu National Park, Malaysia. And then by November, we had a training course on freshwater and brackish water fish taxonomy in Ubon, Chastani, Thailand. And we have our uh, field laboratory as the Metal River. So it's quite interesting because they have a very different approach in taxonomy with regards to fish. And it's something new. Well, I'm a terrestrial ecologist. It's something new to me, uh, learning uh, freshwater fish taxonomy. And then by November 2012, we had a meeting on uh, SEPA. This is Communication, Education, and Public Awareness. Now in the world, or global arena, IEC is no longer the uh, word, no? It's already a passe term. It's now it is SEPA, Communication, Education, and Public Awareness. And we have this in University Terrorically Taharapan in Surabaya, Indonesia. And by December, we have another one on uh, terrestrial plants, which is uh, monohots, specifically monohots. We have this in Witsiriki Botanic Garden, Chiang Mai, Thailand. That's another botanic garden that I can recommend to you to visit. Because there are barium uh, laboratories also quite uh, uh, interesting, also amazing. And also, of course, the botanic garden itself. So by 2014 and 2015, uh, we had a third year, a third phase of uh, Japan-funded uh, taxonomy trainings, 
we have now prior fights, credo fights, and economically important insects, though, which is which we focus on predators and parasitoids. Um, we had, uh, for the prior fights, we had Dr. Benito Tan as our uh, resource person. And uh, it's quite sad that he passed away just last year. So we lost another uh, taxonomist. And then uh, the economically important insects, predators and parasitoids, we had Dr. Ejimeo Jun, uh, Lip Jr. as one of our uh, resource persons. We took him to Big Botanic Garden. And then, uh, of course, uh, when we went into the prior fights and Kirito fights, this was in Lipi Pogor again in Indonesia. Uh, this was the basic course of taxonomy. And then we had the advanced course. Uh, on Brian Fies and Terrible Fies by November. And uh, this was held in Bali Botanic Garden, Bali, Indonesia. Again, one of the oldest botanic gardens in Southeast Asia. So we have two very old botanic gardens. One is the Jigolas Botanic Garden uh, in, uh, in Java, and the other one is the Bali Botanic Garden. So when you go to Bali, don't just look at the beaches and the tourist areas. I recommend that you visit this uh, Bali Botanic Garden. And it's 1,000, again, 1,400 meters above sea level, and it's a nice place to go to. And by January 2015, we have an internship program on the taxonomy of prior fights and terrific fights. Uh, it's the Queen's Rated Botanic Garden again in our field. Uh, evaluate the field work was in Doi Tanon National Park, Chiang Mai, Thailand. Now the Doi Tanon National Park is the highest point in Thailand. It's around 2,500 meters above sea level. Although it's not a botanic garden, it's not uh, an ASEAN heritage park, but again, this is whenever you'll be in Chiang Mai, it's a good place to visit. You don't need to go, you don't need to walk to the summit, you just take your car all the way to the summit. So it's not, uh, it's not tiring. No? And it's a very uh, tourist-friendly area. Okay, okay, October 2016, we had uh, biodiversity assessment methodologies held in Gurumuru National Park. We have uh, Sandra over there. We have as one of our resource persons. Uh, we, we also took her to Sarawak. And then, uh, just lately, this March, we had mycology and taxonomy of large fungi in Libby, Bogor, Indonesia. So we're going to the, uh, the smaller, smaller taxa. No? Okay, announcement. 02 to 11 October 2017, we have taxonomy of high elevation pasture plants, again in Queen's Rigid Botanic Garden and Doi Tano National Park, Chiang Mai, and this will be held next week. So after this, we go next week to Chiang Mai to hold this uh, training program. And uh, again, of course, we have uh, Dr. George, uh, I forgot the last name. <laughs> Uh, Dr. George here is uh, quite uh, specializing in the uh, Erekaski and all of those high elevation vascular plants. So uh, it's nice to meet you, sir. But unfortunately, we won't have you as a resource person, but we have Japanese uh, counterparts as resource persons for these high vascular, uh, uh, high elevation vascular plants. So this will be held next week. And this is some of the publications that we came out with with respect to those training, uh, training programs. We have some training manuals, field guides, and uh, workshop reports. We have a field guide here on uh, monotone plants of northern Thailand, and then a training manual on freshwater and brackish water fish taxonomy. And then uh, this is our latest publications. I have some there those who are interested to get some, no? some copies. Field Guide to the Territo Fights of Chiang Mai, uh, Guide to the Briophytes in the Limestone Glass House of Queen's Botanic Garden, and 
the field guide to the plants of the Deer Cape Trail to the Molo National Park, Sarawak. Although it may be specific to those places, but many of the species found in these publications you, could, you can find in Southeast Asia. Okay. So it's also relevant or important to those who would like to go into these uh, uh, plant groups. And uh, well, we have uh, immortalized Dr. Benny's uh, name here, although we don't need to. And the funny thing is, uh, the New York Botanic Garden contacted us because they wanted to have these copies. And they said that they are the world's repository of bryophytes and teritophytes. So now we have our output in the New York Botanic Gardens as archived there. And lately, we were contacted by the Washington DC Botanic Garden because they wanted, the, they wanted to have copies of this book also. Through John Ritoliato also. Uh, he gave his copy to the uh, Washington DC Botanic Garden. So now he's pestering me to give him more copies. <laughs> yeah, okay. So I also gave some copies also to uh, Dr. JC here, Gonzalez. So, if you do not have time, you just go there, you just come to our uh, place. And then, of course, the clearinghouse mechanism from coming up with information, generating uh, these kinds of uh, information. Now we have to put them in some kind of storage place, which is the asset clearinghouse mechanism. So, we have a species database coming from uh, taxonomies all over Southeast Asia and uh, some uh, uh, ministries. We have uh, at the latest uh, 68,749 records and still building because uh, it's not only the Southeast Asia that we have a source but we also uh, harvest data from the Global Biodiversity uh, Initiative Facility, the uh, World World Commission on Protected Areas, IUCN, FAO, well, you name it. As long as it's uh, found in Southeast Asia, we try to harvest that and put it in this species database. So we have that uh, from, of course, from, uh, from, from amphibians to birds to fish to snails and, of course, the plants. And even, uh, what's the, what do you call this? Uh, jellyfish. So we have those 68,000 species, we have that in our species database, all found in Southeast Asia. And then we also have the protected areas database. Now there are more than uh, 1,000 plus uh, protected areas in Southeast Asia. And uh, we also come up with this uh, database. And this is the URL that you can uh, look into. We follow the format of the World Database of Protected Areas and uh, we also put in the key biodiversity areas in the ASEAN region. And of course, uh, we have many information regarding these uh, key biodiversity areas, especially for the Philippines, because it's easier, it's close. But for the other ASEAN member states, it's a bit difficult. But we have this uh, protected area database. We also have a database of invasive alien species, and we have uh, partnered with uh, the CABI, Center for Agriculture and Biosciences International. Uh, they had a project once, the FORIS, uh, Forestry uh, Invasive Species Project for Southeast Asia. Uh, that project was based in uh, BMD with uh, Dr. Mundita in there as uh, the project leader also. So this is how it looks like. In, uh, oh, that's a bit a blur, no? but uh, oh, you, you get the you get the picture. So, uh, for example, the Kanya uh, Planta, we have the we have the family, the common names, the description, the, the leaves, of the flowers, etc. So it's there. No? The information is there. We also have an electronic library database. 
So we're trying to harvest and look into the internet, in many web, uh, websites, and those that are by the rich generated references, we categorize them in thematic areas. And uh, today we have 11,500 uh, references. And this is the URL which you can uh, log on to. Friends of Biodiversity. Okay, this is a database where we have people working on biodiversity conservation. And this is also the database where people in Southeast Asia look for experts, look for people who can assist them in uh, biodiversity conservation. So if your name is not yet here inside, I suggest you log on to it. And I think there's some instructions on how to uh, input or enter your names and uh, expertise into this Friends of uh, Biodiversity database. And of course, we have other uh, services like the ASEAN Heritage Parks. And well, for the information of everybody here in the Philippines, we have eight ASEAN Heritage Parks. Mount Kenya is one, Iglit Bajo, uh, Tubataha, um, Mount Malinda, Mount Kitanglad, Kamigin, Hibokibo. Hibokibo. But it's quite uh, a tongue twister for foreigners. So we always say, oh, that's a big national part. It's easier to remember. It's, uh, and then we have Mount Amigigan also, Mount Apple. So all of those have unique characteristics to become an ASEAN Heritage Park. And uh, to date, we have 40. As of two weeks ago, we have 40. The newest ASEAN Heritage Park that we have is the Wakatobi Bali National Park in Indonesia and the Kepulauan Seribu Marine National Park in Indonesia also. Incidentally enough, uh, the people for coral conservation there, they have their training still in Bohol and also in Bolinao. So they, uh, we have technology transfer also uh, coral uh, gardening. And they're doing it in the Kepulauan Seribu National Park. Unfortunately, I have heard that they're doing it here in the Philippines. But they're doing it. They're taking coral gardens and then they're taking it, uh, the, the corals, the hard corals, and they send it to the world market. And uh, it's a livelihood program for the uh, island communities in that Marine National Park. And this is the URL. Okay. Well, it says here it's 38, but as of two weeks ago, it's 40 now. And we also have the IG Targets Explorer. And this one, if you want to know how the uh, ASEAN member states, especially the Philippines for this matter, how we progress and uh, progress in achieving the 20 IG Biodiversity bio Targets, then uh, you can log on to this uh, web page. Under development, we have lessons learned. Lessons learned database. Wherein uh, we have so many lessons learned in uh, biodiversity conservation. And hopefully, uh, you can learn some lessons here in, in biodiversity conservation and your activities. And that is the URL. We also have the policies database. It's not only for the Philippines, but the whole and member states that we were, we are trying to uh, collect and uh, put into one uh, database. And species in protected areas. Now, this is a bit difficult to do because of uh, the international wildlife, illegal wildlife trade. So we just could not put in the specific locations of endangered species in these protected areas, but some information are there. We also have the ASEAN Biodiversity Outlook, which uh, states that uh, where are we or how are we doing in terms of biodiversity conservation in Southeast Asia. Uh, this is now in the printing press and it will be out hopefully by next month. And if you want some copies, just visit, visit us in our new building. We have a new building here, so you're invited to come over and uh, see 
that building, but uh, we will we'll be transferring to that new building next week. And inside that uh, ASEAN Biodiversity Outlook, uh, we also have uh, what we call the infographics. It's a one-page information page wherein we look into the uh, status of using the framework of Tipsy, of uh, the uh, impact and response, etc., and the ways forward. And we, uh, with respect to the general regional action plan that we uh, came up with uh, so last week. Uh, these are some of the principles that we made. Uh, uh, of course, the ecosystems approach, sharing of information, uh, build capacities, human capacities, updating of data, and focus on threatened species and critical habitats, and of course, sustained allocation of financial in kind of infrastructure support. So. Uh, that's what we look forward to for this uh, regional action plan on GTI. And these are some of the strategic actions, public awareness and networking. Well, not everybody knows what taxonomy is, so we have to do some very hard work on taxonomy. And then capacity building, information and knowledge management, of course, research and development. We need that, especially in this region where we have very high endemicity and very high uh, vulnerable and threatened species. We do do that. Lobbying, of course, for more policy uh, support. And these are the uh, outputs. We have and also we have to finalize the impact assessment of taxonomy trainings in ASEAN. And some ways forward. We have to prepare the guidelines for GTI photo points. We have to leverage funds. Again, we have to follow projects in Japan. They're much interested in taxonomy. And then uh, conduct more trainings, which we will do. And of course, uh, liaising and strategic linkages. Ah, no. Now, this is very important. Identify priority taxa. We have so much taxa going around, but we do not know what you want to be trained in. So we will be asking the ASEAN member states to identify those taxa for more trainings on it. And of course, uh, inform ACT of taxonomy activities. Uh, last slide, I always say this to friends and to scientists and people. Never lose sight of international agreements because uh, it's the one that charts our course, especially in Global Taxonomy Initiative. And then again, if you uh, if you have researches or uh, conduct R and D, and you run out of uh, research topics to do so, look into this international agreements because it's there. And the more that you strengthen your proposal, because you have linked it to the international community, to the global community, and not just the national. Sometimes the national, you have all the interests there, but sometimes uh, you run out of researchable areas because they have been done already by other people. You look into the international agreements. You have more researchable areas there. So with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we just log on to our assembly.org and we have all those information that uh, I have uh, presented this morning. So thank you very much.